Hello and welcome into the Canyons News Podcast. I am Sam Rabadi. I'm joined by Elijah Dixon and Eli Kern. Uh, today, we got an interesting topic. We're really going to delve into COC's women's soccer team. If you haven't been paying attention, um, they're off. They're, they've are they undefeated in conference. Um, they've got a great record. And um, so we're going to delve into that a little bit more. Um, kind of as we go along in the podcast. So I'm um, going to go ahead and kind of bring in my teammates. Um, and, you know, we're just going to go ahead and start discussing um, College of the Canyons women's soccer. And uh, ho- hopefully, guys, uh, we'll learn a little something. So, I mean, starting off, I know that you got a chance to kind of work with the team recently, do some stuff with some of their players and speak to some of the coaches. So I think it would be appropriate if you want to just kind of Give us a bit of background and context as to the team and why we're talking about them today. Yeah, so they are undefeated in their last 13 games, um, undefeated in the conference. Um, I went to a game last last week, last Friday, and they dominated the team 8-1. So they're, they're really strong offensively. They score over three goals a game, and they've got uh, three great, really, uh, strikers in Ashley Strigel, Alyssa Edwards, and Ryan Shepard. Um, and so they're just really, and the game that I got to go see, they were dominating both offense and defensively, where they were able to press uh, West LA. And the game was honestly just played in the in the COC half. Um, and yeah, they scored seven goals in the first half. Um, so there, there are three games left. Um, in the regular season, and then they begin their their playoff run. So we're really down into the crunch time of this team, and I think it's important that we talk about them because, uh, you know, who knows how far they could really go this season. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have to overcome some some teams that have beaten them. I know Shafee knocked them out of the, the playoffs last year, and then they also beat them again this year. So that's a team that they might have to run into so it'll be really interesting to see how they kind of finish the season and how the, well they do in the playoffs. Um, what do you think uh, uh, contributes to their success this season, honestly? So they're they're led by Justin London, head coach Justin London, and he's been at the helm for 15 seasons. So they've got tremendous consistency uh, with, with the coach London. And I think that permeates down to the team where he's able to kind of find these talents in the Santa Clarita Valley, uh, recruit them, bring them into COC. And he's he's just been, I, I think, like a steady hand in the team. Um, he's got great assistant coaches with him. But for, for me, l- watching the team, I just feel like they're so strong offensively and defensively. And, and there's something interesting. They kind of rotate two goalkeepers which is not something you, you see quite often. But, yeah, I think their three goal scorers are like the focal point of the team. But if you look at their assists, it's really spread around the team. So it's not just their three forwards that are dominating the game. It's everyone getting involved. And I know I was at practice, and I know they, they drill their players on each of them being able to take the ball and move forward with it. That was a, kind of a big emphasis in the practice that I went to was was each player taking the ball moving forward finding a teammate making quick decisions and you can see that on the field and i think that's contributed to their success um i also noticed something that um in this league or conference that they have free subs do you think that contributes also to something that they um, are able to um win with or i i think so i think i think you can keep players fresh that way but i didn't really get a sense that they use the fresh subs like abusively Mm -hmm. Um, I just know that when they got up on West LA, they they quickly subbed out some of their key players. But I'm glad you asked me that question because there is one player on the team, and I was able to um, sit down and talk to her. Her name is Ryan Shepard. She's one of she's tied for second on the team with nine goals. I um I was able to talk to her, and her story is interesting. So she has asthma, and then she also has vocal cord dysfunction. Um, so that it really impacts her inhaling and exhaling. And there are times throughout the game where she needs to take a breath. 
So she'll either not go the full 90 or sometimes if she's struggling with chest pain, um, they will sub her out and let her catch her breath. So I really think it benefits Ryan, but as, as a whole, I don't. I didn't really get the sense that they really use that um, tactic too too often. And the vocal cord, um, I don't know what it's called, but um, uh, the vocal cord. Vocal cord uh, dysfunction. Dysfunction. Does that affect her on the field, like talking to her teammates, and um, you know, because soccer is a very vocal sport, you can't really talk to your coaches. You have to really. Um, I'm assuming she's one of the captains of the team. She has to uh, move people around. You know, how does that affect her? So she's definitely one of the uh, strong personalities on the team. Um, she's very um, vocal. Um, she's she communicates really well, um, and her teammates also told me that in the locker room she's a strong figure. She's trying to hype everyone up. So for for Ryan, I think it's all about picking her spots. So she's able to go like a certain amount. Um, at at like 100 mm -hmm. but then she but what's great up about the forward position is that she's able to you're right the forward position sometimes you can take a break and and slow your heart rate down mm -hmm. so I think it's the perfect position for her mm -hmm. um, but on the field from what I saw from her is it didn't affect her ability to like communicate with her teammates um, the only thing from talking to her that she told me is sometimes it can hit hard to where she experiences chest pains and she needs to either come out of the game or her teammates need to cover for her. But she scored a goal mm -hmm. and it was it was a great assist and then she made a quick move, turn and shot on goal. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you've seen her play, you know that's the strength of her game um, is her ability to play in tight spaces and get shots off without much space. That's interesting. So um, I kind of want to zoom it out a bit for maybe some of the people out there who might be listening who if they aren't as familiar with soccer in general like when you hear a team has a record like this obviously you're assuming that they have like really good players but can you speak to like what it is that they do so consistently from game to game that's able to how are they able to maintain such consistent success well i think they're the class of their conference that's for sure from what from what i can gather is they are so they're strong offensively they've got three um three playmakers three scorers um so i think that's what stands out but i also think they're really strong defensively where they allow less than one goal a game and they've got good goalkeepers they got two that they can rotate so i i think that's kind of what stands out is their ability to score it sounds simple but their ability to score and then um, and then they stop you from scoring um, and something that I notice is they play fast, they play physical, and they want to press and be in your face. And I think that's something that most teams can't handle. So, no, I think that that's actually, you're hitting on a really good point. And I've only seen very limited footage of the team playing, but from what I understand from even some of the previous coverage we've done here of the team at Canyons News this semester is that I remember hearing a quote from the coach saying that he looks at his offense as a form of defense and the way that they're able to keep possession and play around the opposition and kind of wait for those moments to present themselves rather than having to feel rushed and forced in attack. I think that that is something that for an opposition team is demoralizing because what you re start to realize is that we're hardly getting the ball and when we do get it, they're right in our face already trying to get it back. And so you really fall into this trap of Every single time you get the ball, you want to make something happen. You want to maybe overcompensate because of the way that they set the game up in a way where it's constant pressure without the ball and then a very methodical and I think almost kind of a torturous method of, you know, death by a thousand cuts rather than going for that one big kill shot. You know what I mean? And it's definitely something that I think Coach London is probably very proud of because that's only something that comes from the top. You know, you can have all these talented forwards that they have and I'm sure that that is great to be able to have players that can change a game in a moment that's always huge but having that consistency and having a team that can play so well with the ball be so intense without it and be so disciplined in those um in those routines and all moving as one unit because that's the only way these things happen you know you're talking about these players getting in the face of West LA and stuff like that and not letting them play with the ball and giving them no time that has to be such a organized team, you know, 
process because if you have one striker coming up and your midfielder is lazy for a couple seconds, that pass will be open to the next player down the field. And so everyone moves as one. It's like watching birds migrate in the sky. They all move as one kind of shape collectively, and it's very impressive. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with that analysis from from the way they practice to the way they play is they're well-structured. And that absolutely comes down from, from the head coach. And he's also got two great assistants that help the team. And so I, I think it starts at the top, like you were talking about, and it definitely goes goes to the players. And they understand, it, whether it's practice or in the game, they need to be uh, physical and they need to be fast. And just like you are saying, when you're able to keep the ball from the other team, it really is demoralizing. Like you're you're chasing you're chasing shadows, and that that's not fun. And so it kind of takes them out, takes their opponents out of their game, and it's just one of the other reasons that they've been so successful. Um, I let me ask you guys this question: um, Do you think that because they're playing so well, and they haven't lost in thirteen games, but do you think it's possible that they might? have peaked too soon i know i know a team can certainly dominate and be dominant throughout the season uh but what about the other side of it and of are they peaking too soon i think the main challenge when it comes to stuff like that is a mental thing i think the players have to stay hungry and not obviously when you're riding a win streak like that it's easy to start to think that you know we're too good for this conference, we're too good for these teams, and you can start to kind of relax going into things. What gives me hope as a student and a fan of College of the Canyon sports is that when you look at some of these recent results against teams where their quality probably is higher, yes, but those score lines are still like very dominant. They have not let their foot off of the gas one ounce. And so, you know, you'd think at 3-4-1 or 3-4-0, a team would start to slow down, but like, that last game, it's ridiculous. And so when you start to see those score lines, and it's not just a one-off, it's multiple games. As you said, they're averaging over three goals a game. I, for people who don't maybe follow the sport, that doesn't happen right. at, at higher levels. And I'm not to assert that this level is low by any means, but at this high of a level, like collegiate sports, to see a team that is averaging three goals a game is or over three goals a game is remarkable. Yeah, it isn't common at all. And so I think that them showing that hunger showing that want to not just beat teams but destroy teams not you know we're not just going to send you home with an l we're going to send you home and make you question if you even want to play the sport anymore like that's the level of intensity that i think you need to carry throughout a season and we're getting right towards the end of it and so if they still have their foot this you know foot on the gas at this late point in the season i would feel pretty confident that they haven't peaked too early and mentally they're still thinking about that loss last year to Chafee and knowing that job is not finished, you know? And something that I want to add to um, and that I think helps at this level, especially at a community college where you're only here two years, is mm, these players are trying to go from a two-year to a four-year. So I think that also helps with the intensity of not letting up because it's like, hey, I want to get, I want to get noticed and I want to go to a four-year and I want to be able to put a great highlight reel on huddle so that recruiters can watch me play. So I think that also helps uh, in COC's favor. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I mean, I believe also um, one of the contributing factors to the success is COC's team is so deep. Um, you know, looking at their stats, I think there's only five people on the roster that don't have an assist. So clearly there's not only like a hunger to win games, but a hunger to be good in the game. You know, um, people around the team, I'm assuming they, they, as you said, they want to go to four-year universities. So there's no reason for them to let off the gas if, you know, there's so much ahead of their, you know, their careers are so young and they have so much to look forward to ahead of them. Absolutely. And and kind of going back to Eli's point is, so they lost to Shafee. We mentioned this earlier. They lost to Shafee last year in the playoffs. They lost to them earlier in this season. So that's a team that they might see down the road. So they've got three games left before they start the playoffs. We'll see how far this team can go. Um, they certainly have showed signs that they can be dominant, but they do have three losses to non-conference teams. And they're probably gonna have to run up, run up against them at some point. So, 
it'll only time will tell kind of like how far they'll they'll go in the playoffs but um i'm definitely going to keep an eye on them because it's they really are an interesting team and you know it's good for coc if they win you know absolutely it's something that we all be proud of absolutely go cougars you know go cougars (laughs) Um, I believe that's all that we have for you guys today. So from myself, Eli Kern, my co-host, Elijah Dixon, and Sam Rabati, thank you guys so much for watching or listening, and we'll see you guys next time.